Your Excellencies, um, I now have the pleasure to hand over the floor to the last speaker of the closing session, um, Mr. Antonio Vittorino, the Director General of the International Organization for Migration. Um, DG, the floor is yours. Thank you so much and good afternoon to all of you. Madam Chair of the ECOSOC, uh, dear Yasmina, it's an honor for me to be here and uh, for IOM, an honor to hold this uh, first 2023 session of the IDM in uh, this uh, building in the UN headquarters when after uh, four years where we could not have it in person. So we first and foremost celebrate the fact that we can be here seeing each other and exchanging views on uh, the most pressing issues in the migration agenda. Four years ago, um, we were starting this journey towards uh, the implementation of the Global Compact on safe, orderly, and regular migration. And uh, uh, last year, year in New York, we had the International Migration Review Forum. Those were two milestones of uh, the international dialogue on migration and were also two milestones uh, to test the capacity of the international community to cooperate in dealing with the challenges of migration. This year, we are confronted with uh, an equally uh, challenging uh, set of events. Last year, last month, I'm sorry, or last week, I think it was last week, yes, last week, uh, the Water Conference. And for us, uh, the Water Conference apparently has got nothing to do with migration. No, it has everything to do with migration. Each time and time and more we see that uh, the scarcity of water is a critical element for climate change and for human mobility. And uh, we are looking forward to, in July, to have the high-level political forum on sustainable development. And uh, in the next few months, we will have uh, the African Continental uh, Climate Action Summit in Nairobi, where we will discuss the priorities on uh, the uh, Continental Climate Change Agenda, beginning of September. Then, immediately after, here in New York again, we will have the Climate uh, Week uh, in parallel or very close to the General Assembly. And last but not least, all these efforts drive us towards the SDG Summit in September. And uh, in each of these junctures, IOM is trying to have the opportunity to underscore the contribution of migrants to achieving a sustainable development for all of the opportunities of human mobility, safe, orderly, and well-managed migration. And the international community is being called upon to respond to increasing needs, let's say with less financial support, as protracted crises are crowded out by the new situations of acute humanitarian concern. We have all to recognize that funding is being squeezed in all directions, and as uh, funding becomes scarce, donors, some donors have introduced <coughs> aid conditionality related to migration management. At the same time, migrants' remittances and transfers proved relatively resilient during the COVID-19 pandemic. As we have just heard, close to one trillion US dollars per annum globally, notwithstanding the fact that uh, there continues to be high transfer fees. Remittances have therefore proven again to be greater and more stable than both foreign direct investment and official development assistance. At the midway point of the 2030 agenda, these challenges risk leaving hundreds of millions of international migrants, internally displaced people, and the globally displaced people behind. Migration, I do believe, has been a cornerstone of development, prosperity, and progress since the dawn of time. Mobile populations, one in eight people in the world, are part of the solutions. 
And the 2030 agenda and the SDGs will not be achieved without due consideration on human mobility. Just reflect on what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. The world has come to a stop. There was no human mobility practical, in practical terms. And we have seen the negative impact of such situation in global trade and in the drop of global economy growth. The Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration and the Secretary General Agenda for Internal Displacement often uh, offer us a vision to optimize the overall benefits of migration and to prevent and resolve situations of displacement. But when we discuss the drivers of migration, when we speak about the deep root causes of migration, and when we try to focus ourselves on durable solutions, what are we really talking about? We are talking about development. We are talking about the challenges to promote development, which means that we are at the very core of the SDGs. We are at the very core of the Agenda 2030. So it is impossible to debate the future of the SDGs without fully incorporating this cross-cutting issue called migration. We have today, uh, we have heard in the first panel, a debate on data. International migration highlights the positive role migrants play in sustainable development, but we need to have data of quality and be capable to analyze those data. And we have to recognize also that our capacity to analyze data needs to be improved. So that such insights draw the focus to the actions that will accelerate sustainable development. Our conclusion, our take, is that we need more disaggregated data by gender, by age, by territory or <coughs> of origin and territory of destination, and doing more to profile the migratory routes worldwide. But we had also a discussion on the diaspora develop safe and regular migration pathways across borders, significantly reduce remittance transaction costs, and integrate migrants in diaspora's human and financial capital in trade systems to boost global value chains and the green economy. And here we have to be humble. Yes, the SDGs and also the Global Compact set a target. 3% of fees for transfer of remittances. We are very far from that. Currently, worldwide, the average fees of transfer of remittances is around 6%. And if you consider the remittances towards African countries, it's at 7.8%. There is a need to call the private sector and the international financial institutions to put pressure in the reduction of uh, the fees on, on remittances so that we can be aligned with the target of the 2030 agenda. We have uh, had also an interesting debate on uh, health care to people on the move, with a specific focus on the needs of youth and women. And we have to recognize that healthcare is needed for migrants independently of their migratory status if we want to reduce inequalities and vulnerabilities and enable their participation and contribution to societies. We have just to look what that, what happened during the COVID-19 pandemic. When migrants were excluded from healthcare, the virus had the potential to proliferate much faster. The need to guarantee the fundamental human right of access to health care is not just in the interest of the migrants, which will be enough, but it is also in the interest of all communities where migrants are present, as in transit or in destination. I was particularly encouraged in that debate by the call for inclusion of migrants and human mobility considerations from Thailand and Morocco, who are the co-facilitators for the 2023 General Assembly high-level meetings on universal health coverage 
and on pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response, respectively. I look forward to working together with all of you towards this and the SDG Summit, also as in my capacity as coordinator of the UN Migration Network, to both advance migrant inclusive universal health coverage and strengthen the achievement of SDG 3 through the opportunities that human mobility brings. Then we have an extensive discussion on climate change. And we have identified the need to reduce the digital access gap for people on the move and use digitalization of economies to effective leverage migrants and displaced persons innovation to contribute for green transition and climate change. And uh, linked to the need to mobilize migrants to the energetic transition, we need to invest in the integration of human mobility in national adaptation plans, in the preparedness and anticipation to address loss and damages, to reduce climate-induced displacement, and build resilient and peaceful cities and communities. In fact, we have to recognize that uh, the figures of people forced displacement by climate change is on the rise everywhere in all geographies. And this will have to be taken into account when COP28 will focus on adaptation, mitigation, and building resilience of the communities that are confronted with climate change. As a cross-cutting issue, it is critical that we prioritize the inclusion and empowerment of all young people. I don't need to add anything to what Yasmina has just, uh, has just said. Because we try to focus not just on the most vulnerable, particularly women, children, people with disabilities, people with uh, diverse identities, but we also need to focus on certain groups that require not just care, but also mobilization. Young, young people that should not be seen as victims or vulnerable but they should be seen as actors and agents of change. Indigenous communities that are particularly hit by climate change, and of course women. Women are for us, IOM, our best allies in a large number of projects, starting with community stabilization, but also prevention and uh, avoiding violent extremism, fighting against gender-based violence that is a scourge we are confronted everywhere. And for that purpose, we need to create policies that prioritize the well-being of all through an intersectional approach in order to accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. So, Madam Chair, Yasmina, dear friends, allow me to once again extend my gratitude for the solution-focused and action-oriented dialogue that we have had all in the past two days. I look forward to the continued deliberations on the road to the SDG Summit and, of course, beyond. We have all something to learn one from the others. I think these sessions have been extremely enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Director General, and all the distinguished uh, speakers in this closing session. Um, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you again for being with us over the past two days. Um, the only concluding remarks I will have to make now is to wish you all a very good Friday afternoon, uh, a beautiful weekend ahead, I hope, and uh, safe travel back home. Uh, and I suggest that we end by giving ourselves another round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you.